Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. Who are your Desolate Search Peasants Vessels? I'm a useful idiot. Today I want to talk about Africa again. Uh, I know there's plenty of other things going on that are grabbing people's attention, but I wanted to do this story because uh, I found an article about how much uh, private investment there is in farmland in Africa, and I found it so uh, surprising, or actually I should say unsurprising, that uh, I wanted to do a video on it. Uh, topic I've been thinking about for a while because I've done a number of videos about AFRICOM and wars going on in Africa and the recolonization of Africa and redressing colonial borders and um, this no, new story taps into that quite well so this video is going to be about why Africa will be recolonized and this let me get to this new story first it turns out that hedge funds for the last three years have bought 148 million acres of African farmland. And uh, that's a pretty startling number. And uh, there are 190 different private equity firms that are acquiring land in Africa. So this is a huge deal. And that's just the last three years. And you know, the word is out that land is dirt cheap in uh, Africa. So they're going to go in and get in there and uh, make massive investments now. Um, because they know that all, all the uh, rights and, uh, to the minerals and, as well as agriculture are going to be worth quite a bit for a, a long time to come. So Africa is the new frontier for global food and agrofuel production as well. So that's another thing, all these biofuels like ethanol, corn, corn being used for ethanol in the United States. And uh, so we will be seeing more um, giant commercial uh, fuel business taking agriculture in Africa to produce alternative fuels. But uh, one of the things that's interesting about uh, these uh, hedge funds moving into Africa, and when I say hedge funds, I also mean um, banks, pension funds, pen pension funds, hedge funds, and other financial institutions are all getting in on this because right now the returns are between 8% 8 and 25%, so it's really worth their while. But uh, here's the interesting thing in the contract, and uh, this tells you explicitly that we are seeing the recolonization of Africa because the contracts quote the contracts clauses allow foreign companies to keep exporting as much as 80 percent of what is grown on the acquired land even if the host country is experiencing food shortages unquote so that's right you heard me correct they have it written into the contract to make sure that the investors will keep getting money on their return even if, for example, a uh, country descends into famine and uh, the food is needed to uh, sustain a nation through um, lean times. So that's a very interesting clause. It says a lot to me about the recolonization. So, so we have banks, pension funds, hedge funds, other financial institutions. We have the World Bank, the IMF, and the WTO all jockeying to uh, uh, move into Africa and uh, the United States and AFRICOM are part of that. So now the full weight of the United States military, and this also includes NATO and the UN, needless to say, um, with all these operations all over Africa, um, will be setting up Africa for massive exploitation. And um, the reason why is because it's uh, untapped resources and relatively sparse population. So there's much to be explored. There's much that's known there. Um, it's kind of like a the, all the resources available to Australia in our modern age, or even the American uh, West, um, the amount of uh, unexploited uh, resources that were found. So we find this new frontier, and uh, there's a lot of interest in this because the economic forces in the world need something to keep driving growth, and uh, Africa is one of the last um, undeveloped areas in the world with vast resources. And uh, just to give you another idea, uh, a couple of lists here of uh, why what we're talking about as far as resources in Africa, and I've included some really great uh, graphic links below um, showing uh, the vast amount of resources, and I found this uh, a great presentation. But uh, the resources we're talking about are peanuts, coffee, coal, manganese, iron ore, natural gas, oil, diamonds, gold, iron, cobalt, uranium, copper, bauxite, silver, petroleum, cocoa beans, wood, tropical fruit, zinc, phosphate, lead, platinum. 
boy, that's enough to make a commodities trader drool. And, uh, and then the number of countries that have oil, either uh, known oil, oil production now, including a couple of leading oil producers, and uh, uh, countries that are now going to be developing their oil industries, and includes Nigeria, Sudan, Libya, Algeria, Egypt, Angola, G Gabon, Congo, Cameroon, Tunisia, Equatorial Guinea, Democratic Republic of Congo, Ivory Coast, Chad, Namibia, South Africa, and Madagascar. It sounds like almost all of Africa. So uh, with this uh, cornucopia of minerals and oil and, and uh, resources, including forest and wood, um, this is a uh, the last frontier for uh, economic development. So this is why we're going to have the uh, banks and investors feeding off it. That's why we're going to have increased military presence. And um, we have uh, Africa as a potential breadbasket for the world as well. Africa possesses 60% of the world's unused but potential arable farmland. So another reason why um, all the big investors are getting in on that early so they can uh, monopolize that and once again uh, help control the food uh, production and food prices uh, around the globe. And, um, and, and we also know that uh, this move into Africa is uh, countering China, who's uh, also uh, had the foresight to make huge investments in, China, in uh, Africa. And uh, this will be an ongoing struggle uh, between the United States and China to show down Africa. And, um, but since the American strategy is to encircle, uh, China and then to economically uh, put the screws on it, um, ultimately the U.S. and uh, Western powers will prevail in Africa and uh, eventually the pivot to Asia will continue. So, uh, and then uh, Africa will also be interesting dealing with all the post-colonial borders and, and the, the so-called war on terror will be used to uh, be an umbrella for large amounts of corporate investment in Africa and uh, making sure that a more stable environment is created and uh, more resources can be exploited. So that will um, dominate U.S. foreign policy in that region. And uh, terrorism will be used as a uh, cover. And uh, because as we've seen around the globe, any insurrections or sect sectarian opposition can now be categorized as terrorists. So, uh, that any kind of uh, internal struggle in a lot of these countries can just be characterized as terrorism and can justify extraordinary uh, measures. And um, so anyway, and then of course uh, we'll also be selling massive amounts of arms to all these uh, puppet regimes that will be set up all over Africa. And um, so that that's kind of it in a nutshell. That's why um, Africa will be recolonized and uh, it's uh, uh, continuing at a uh, Staggering level. So 190 private equity firms are now buying up 148 million acres of African farmland in the last three years. Another telling indication of the future. I'm used to Lydia. Don't you be one too.